Research Design Lab. Hello everyone. This video will be a demonstration on how to use an RF, PX and RX with 8-bit encoder and decoder from researchdesignlab.com. In this kit here, we could find a pair of RF modules. One will be your RF receiver and the other one will be your RF transmitter. This one is your RF receiver and this is your RF transmitter. As you can see here, there are a number of IOs here. This here will be your 8-bit IOs which when kept high at the TX end, the RX end will also go high. And this header can be used to transmit serial TTL data to the receiver module. Now I'll demonstrate the working of 8-bit IOs by controlling these 8 LEDs wirelessly across these modules. Basically this is a simple 8 LED board with ground as the common terminal. Now let us make the power connections for this RF receiver board. Here I have used a regulated power supply board along with this mini breadboard. This power supply board here has basically 3 voltage levels. 3.3 volt, 5 volt and 12 volt. Since this is a receiver module, I am interested only in 5 volts. The black wire here is for ground, the red goes to plus 5 volt and the yellow is for 12 volt which we will not use it for now. Next up, connect this 8-bit female jumper cable to the 8-bit LED inputs and the other end to the RF receiver 8-bit bus. Now connect the red wire to the plus 5 volt of the receiver board, black to the ground, also we need to make a common ground connection between the LEDs and the power source, connect this black wire to the ground, with this the receiver module is ready. Next we need to power on the RF transmitter module, again let me use the regulator power supply board. The transmitter over here could be powered on with either 5V or 12V. If you connect a 12V, you would get an increased range in the transmission. So here I shall connect the yellow wire to 12V and the black wire to the ground. And this blue wire over here will go to plus 5V of the regulator power supply board. The other end let me keep it free for time being. Now let us power on this regulator power supply board to these 12V batteries. To avoid confusion between the receiver and transmitter, I have used two separate batteries so that there are no wires shared between the receiver and transmitter module. Now to check if my receiver and transmitter are in sync, I need to press the reset key present on the RF transmitter module. Every time I do so, you could see an LED turning on and off on the receiver board. Now let us see how your 8-bit IOs behave when I give a 5V trigger to the transmitter end. As you can see the receiver LEDs glow every time I give a high pulse at the transmitter end, indicating a high voltage is generated at the receiver end too. If I just keep one pin high at the transmitter end, the receiver will remain high as long as this state remains at the transmitter. If you could notice there is no wired connection between the receiver and the transmitter module. Basically this data transmission takes place in radio frequency at 434 MHz. Now I shall demonstrate how to use relays along with this port instead of these LED indicators. Remove the 8-bit jumper cables from these LEDs and connect it to the input of this relay board. Then connect the black wire to the ground of the relay board. Since this relay is used 12 volt, we need to power on the board with VCC equivalent to 12 volt. Let me connect this yellow wire to the VCC of the relay board. Now turn on the two regulated power supply boards. Normally it would take around 8 seconds for the board to load its bootloader. So let us give it some time. Now I shall give this 5 volt pulse to the transmitter module. Notice the relays turning on and off at the receiver end. So by using this board, you could also control devices connected to the relays. However, make sure you make proper connections to the board. For example, the transmitter module here, I have given 12 volts. You could also give 5 volt if the range is not a problem to you. But for the receiver module, please connect 5 volts only. I repeat, receiver module works with only 5V. Any voltage higher than 5V may damage your receiver module. Next up, I shall demonstrate how we can receive serial data across the TTL terminals present on the board. For this demonstration, I have two computers with two separate USB to FT232 breakout ports. This here will be my transmitter PC. 
So I shall make the connections of my RF transmitter module to this computer. Red wire here goes to plus 5 volt of the FT232 breakout board and 12 volt of the RF transmitter board. The black wire here goes to the ground of the respective boards. The yellow wire here gets connected to RX of the RF transmitter and TX of the FT232 breakout board. Next, let's make the similar setup required for my RF receiver module. After you connect the FT232 breakout board to your computer, connect this black wire to the ground of the FT232 breakout board and ground of the receiver module. Red wire here goes to plus 5 volt of the respective boards. The blue wire here goes to RX of the FT232 breakout board and TX of the RF receiver. This is how your setup looks once your connections are done. Now we need to open the serial windows of the respective COM ports in each of the computers. This computer view here is my receiver side of the RF module. As you can see here, some data is getting printed on the serial monitor. Please note, this data is being typed by the transmitter side computer. I am not touching any keys of this computer keyboard. Also note the rate at which the data is getting received. This is because there is a 100 millisecond delay for every transmission of character. Also, this system is meant for simplex communication. That is, you can transmit at one end and receive at the other end. The reverse is not true. Thank you for watching. Visit us at researchdesignlab.com.